Thomas Paine, one of the most progressive leaders of the American Revolution of 1776, he said, these are the times that try men's souls, and we are certainly living in a difficult period right now. The people of Russia faced a somewhat similar period about 100 years ago, and when describing that period in the history of his country in 1905, after the uprising was defeated, the great Russian revolutionary leader Lenin, he said, depression, demoralization, splits, discord, defection, and pornography took the place of politics. Now, having unfortunately watched some of the recent debates, I think his words are just as true about the situation today. But everyone here already knew that. If you thought things were just peachy, you wouldn't be here at this meeting. You came here because you want to be involved and you want to solve these problems. Now, what I'm here to do tonight is to tell you why things are this way and what I think can be done about it. To explain the way things are, I'm actually going to go out on a limb here and I'm going to use a four-letter word. It's a four-letter word that anyone who studies economics should be familiar with. The word is glut, G-L-U-T, glut. Actually, I read the Wall Street Journal. I try to read it almost every day. And some interesting headlines recently. This was from today. Farmers in the US are pouring out tens of millions of gallons of excessive milk amid a massive glut that has reduced prices and filled warehouses with cheese. Did you hear about that? Uh, a, glut, a glut in the prices of meat, right? The price of beef, the price of pork is the lowest it's been in a long time. Uh, did you hear that Walmart just closed down a whole bunch of their stores? The price of steel, the price of copper, the price of beef, the price of pork, the price of cars, the price of almost everything is low. Oil prices are still low. They're not as low as they were you know, when they were down to like $27 a barrel, but they're still pretty low. Walmart, like I mentioned, has just closed down a whole bunch of stores. Now, there were entire cities that had sprouted up in places like North Dakota around fracking right, and new oil things, and they're just closing down completely because of the low oil prices. The reason that so many people are suffering economically, the reason that so many people don't have jobs, the reason that those who do have jobs are making such low wages, the reason that the government is cutting spending on education and infrastructure and public hospitals and other things people depend on, it's actually very simple. The reason is this. There's too much stuff. Karl Marx wrote a 1,000-page book about it called Capital. It's worth reading, but rather than recite 1,000 pages to you right now, I'm going to put it the way agitators and organizers have been putting it on soapboxes and on leaflets and nowadays on YouTube and in tweets. This is the way people have explained it. This is the way anti-capitalists and revolutionaries have explained it for the last 200 years. People are homeless because there are too many houses. People are hungry because there is too much food. People are cold in the winter because there is too much heating gas. Capitalism is an irrational system. So what is capitalism? Now, capitalism is a system where the banks, the factories, the stores, the airlines, all the major centers of the economy belong to capitalists or owners. And these capitalists operate the banks, factories, stores, and airlines for the purpose of making profits. They then hire the rest of us, the 99%, the working class, to work in them. And they turn the labor that we do into their profits. The way Frederick Engels described capitalism, he said, under capitalism, the means of production only function as preliminary transformation into capital. Or you can put it as Mao Zedong put it in the little red book. He said, profits are in command. The billionaires in the Walton family that owns the Walmart stores, they don't set up these stores because they think people just really ought to have a nice place to shop. They set them up because they'd like to make profits. Apple makes iPhones because they want to make profits. The people who own the airlines don't run them because they, they're committed to people having uh, you know, a, a great way to travel long distances. They do it to make profits. Under, the, under capitalism, the economy is centered around making profits for a small group of owners, and all kinds of crazy things happen. It's only because of capitalism that you can have 20 empty houses for every homeless person. <coughs> there are a lot of restaurants in New York City where at the end of the night with the excess food, they're instructed not only to just throw it away, but to actually pour motor oil on the food to make sure that no homeless person goes into the garbage and eats it. Uh, 
It is because of the irrationality of capitalism that we can have a country that's crumbling and desperately needs to be fixed up, and at the same time have millions of skilled, able-bodied young people, full of energy, in the prime of their lives, ready to contribute, who cannot find a job. Under capitalism, the capitalists are always looking to make the most profits that they can. And in order to do this, they advance technology. They, they develop more efficient ways of creating products and marketing them. And in the process of doing this, they hire fewer workers. And furthermore, they de-skill the job so the workers that they have are easier to replace. And in the process, in the short term, they make more and more profits. But at the same time, workers are also consumers. And the fewer of them that are hired, and the lower their wages get, the less buying power that they have. This is the problem of overproduction. The Great Depression of the 1930s was a result of the huge leaps in assembly line production. At first, in the 1920s, there was a boom because of what Henry Ford and other capitalists had developed in terms of the industries. But after 1929, there was a global market collapse. And the only thing that ultimately restarted the global economy was the Second World War cleared the market, and allowed for growth once again. The reason that we have such a huge glut in the market today is because we are living in the aftermath of one of the greatest technological leaps in history. What Henry Ford did with the assembly line is nothing compared to what has taken place in the last few decades. 3D printers, cell phone technology, satellite broadcasts, these developments have made production exponentially cheaper and easier than ever before, and the market is now flooded with products that cannot be sold. And there are millions and millions of people who no longer have a place at the assembly line. For example, when my father was in college, he would work the summers in a book bindery. And there'd be hundreds of people in this book bindery who would do nothing but print books all day long and, and bind them, right? Well, nowadays, uh, Amazon create a page, you can print an entire book by pushing a button. That's what the computer revolution has done. Advances in technology should be good. In a rational world, it would mean less work for everyone. But under capitalism, advances in technology create greater abundance of material goods and in the process create greater poverty.